Fall divorce increases the incidence of domestic violence. And that's something that makes it so clear to me that the position of the National Organization of Women here in New York State is just altogether wrong and harmful. That being said, Your Honor, for many years, the Women's Bar Association in New York State, I believe, opposed no-fault divorce. But in or about 2004, they kind of changed their position. That's right. Why do you think they were so steadfast for so many years? And then why do you think they changed their mind? Well, I think that the theory before 2004, and I understand I'm a very active member of the Women's Bar. In fact, I'm a former president of the Westchester Women's Bar and a founder of the Westchester Women's Bar. But prior to 2004, there was a split among the Bar Association members, and some did believe that for the homemaker, the woman who spent many years at home raising the children and didn't have the financial resources that her husband would have, she would have a weapon to hold over his head and say, if you want to get a divorce to go live with your sweetie, you're going to have to pay for it. And so that it was leverage that some people believed uh, was important. Of course, the world has changed. And we see today many, many women who are working and many, many women who are relatively anxious for their independence and anxious for a divorce. And so we saw the change in society. And the Women's Bar recognized that. And they recognized also, and we haven't gotten to this yet, the pain and suffering and the detriment to children that results from full litigation. Children bear a terrible price. And the longer the litigation, the more bitter the litigation, the heavier the damage is, the worse the damage is to the children. And that was a very important factor for the Women's Bar to consider and that we do consider today. Do you think that this legislation affects women of different social and economic statures differently? And do you think that ultimately the passing of this legislation will be because the government and and the Senate are trying to attend to a particular group or section of the population as opposed to the population total? That's a very important question. And I believe that this legislation will benefit the great majority of women and men and children in New York. There may be a small population of the women, such as I described before, who will feel that they've given up a weapon. There's no question. There's no remedy that is perfect in terms of solving everyone's problems. But this need to change this law, this change in the law, will be of great benefit to the, essentially, the population of the state of New York. Some of your colleagues in the legal community have called this legislation, and I think you used the term as well when we first started to speak, divorce on demand. And I can sense from how you've articulated what the process is going to be, that may not necessarily be the case, but why are certain members of the, of the legal community using that term as a tool to try to dismiss or derail this effort? Well, either they're misinformed and don't understand the legislation, or they are being deceptive, one of the two, because it's perfectly clear, as as we said from the very beginning of our meeting here today, that the judge cannot grant the divorce until all of the issues, the economic issues, the custodial issues, uh, the financial issues, the counsel fees, the expert fees, All that has been determined. So it's never divorce on demand. All of these issues have to be determined just as they would if fault were an issue. The only thing that this legislation does, as I said before, is take the bitterness, the anger, the harm, and the expense and the delay out of the process. The process that this legislation wants to follow Is this the similar way that other states who have a no-fault divorce concept, is this how they apply the divorce process, or are they doing it differently? 
As far as I understand, the legislation that's before Senator Hassel Thompson's legislation and Assemblyman Bing's legislation is quite typical of the legislation in other states. In other states that have adopted this no-fault divorce concept, their divorce rates have actually increased in the first five years after the legislation was passed. And then statistically, it looks like the rates have stabilized. Do you feel that's going to happen in New York once this legislation is passed, if it's passed? I think that's very likely to happen because many people who have been unable to obtain a divorce will get their divorce. By the way, we haven't said that, you know, this is this law really affects people differently in diff- different economic uh, levels. A person who can afford to move out of state to a state that has no fault, such as New Jersey or Connecticut, can move, providing that person is not a custodial parent and is not required to stay in New York. But very frequently, people are moving, move out and go to another state because they don't want to be subjected to the fault requirements in New York. Unfortunately, the population that bears the burden of this problem is very are very often the women who are the custodial parents who are required to stay in New York because of the visitation, the parenting entitlements of their ex-spouses. So what are the downsides? Why would someone not think that this would be a good concept for people in New York City or New York State? You know, you asked me that before, and all I can tell you is it's hard to understand. I think uh, that some of those who are opposing it may not understand it. They may think it is divorce on demand. They may feel that they are being economically deprived by this. And some others may have some other agenda. What's your gut reaction? Do you think that the legislation is going to pass as is? Do you think it's going to be refangled, so to speak? And what is the time frame that you think there will be? And you maybe just say maybe another 40 years. I don't know. Let's let's hope not. But but I know you've been very active in this in this concept for, for much of your career. We have been active and the Women's Bar Association has been extremely active. We have had uh, groups of women up in Albany time and again. I've been up there and, and my colleagues have been up there and the Association of the Bar of the City of New York and the County Lawyers uh, and the Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers. Everybody's been trying to get this passed. We have never been so close as I, as I understand it. The, the Senate passed the bill and it is now before the Assembly. And we are hopeful that the leader of the assembly, uh, Mr. Silver, and uh, Helene Weinstein, who's the chair of the Judiciary Committee, and uh, Senator uh, Ruth Hassel Thompson, will put their heads together and get this bill out because it's been too long in coming, and uh, they owe this to the people of the state of New York. Well, Judge, I don't know who better to talk about the subject than you. It's certainly been... Wonderful to to meet you and to go through this. Our guest today has been the Honorable Sandra Miller, who is now currently with the firm of Coffee Finger. If you have any questions on matrimonial or family law matters, Judge Miller will be happy to assist you. You can reach her at her White Plains office at area code 914-946-3700. As always, our audience is welcome to contact our offices with any questions or comments. Stay connected with us on the web at www.msgcpa.com, where you can also subscribe to our newsletter, Forensic Perspectives. We can also be found on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and, of course, by phone. Your topic suggestions for future broadcasts are always welcome. Until our next program, this is Mark Gottlieb. Thank you for joining us. You have just enjoyed another episode of Forensic Perspectives, hosted by financial expert Mark Gottlieb. For questions and or comments regarding this broadcast, please feel free to contact Mark by phone at 516-829-4936 or via email at msgcpa at msgcpa.com. 
We also encourage you to visit our website, www.msgcpa.com. The opinions and commentary in the preceding program provided by our host and guests are for informational and educational purposes only and may not be their personal or professional opinion. No accounting, tax, or legal advice is being provided. The information provided within this broadcast is not an invitation for an attorney-client or accountant-client relationship. One should always seek the advice of competent professionals to assist in their specific needs. In addition, this podcast will not be updated for changes in accounting practices or law. As such, one should not rely on any information provided by this podcast. References to resources are provided solely for the listener's convenience. We have not reviewed or verified any information, advertising, products, resources, or other materials mentioned herein. This broadcast is copyright of Mark S. Gottlieb, CPA PC, all rights reserved. Any redistribution or reproduction of part or all of this broadcast is strictly prohibited unless authorized in writing.